Nathan Zagura, very happy to be joined now by the newest member of the Cleveland Browns, quarterback Case Keenum. And Case, let me just say, welcome to the Browns family. Welcome to Cleveland. And obviously, you're not here yet. And we'll talk about just how crazy this whole experience must have been. But sincerely, welcome to the Browns. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me, Nathan. Uh, you know, we are very, very excited uh, to be a Cleveland Brown. My wife here. Uh, and my son, Kyler, we're down here in Houston. Obviously, this is not your normal, uh, you know, free agent to uh, come in and get to know everybody. So, uh, you know, doing the best we can here. But uh, I'm very excited to be Brown and excited to be a part of what's going on there. Well, fortunately for you, there is some familiarity. Obviously, Bill Callahan was on the staff uh, and became the interim head coach with the Redskins. But we go back to the year 2017, which I know is a very special year to you. You led the Minnesota Vikings to the NFC Championship game, and your quarterback coach that year was none other than Kevin Stefanski. So I'd imagine that may have played a role in, in everything that's transpired to get you here to the Browns. Yeah, definitely. Coach Stefanski. Um... Man, I, I can't say enough good things about him. Uh, I love him to death. Uh, great friend. Uh, his family is incredible. Uh, I'm really, really, really excited that he's got an opportunity to go and, and lead an organization as great as the Cleveland Browns. Um, you know, and that'd be his first shot at uh, being a head coach. And I'm, I'm excited to be a part of what he's going to build there. Um, you know, not just uh, uh, what was there already, but the coaching staff that he's put in place. Uh, I have a lot of familiarity with a lot of guys. Uh, uh, you, you talked about Coach Callahan, but the strength staff, uh, you know, Coach Van Pelt, um, O'Shea, and then you know, on the defensive side, I know a bunch of those guys too. So I'm excited to, uh, to get to work. So, Case, you mentioned earlier off the top, and we got into some of your connections here, but this has been probably a pretty unusual free agency period with everything that's going on in the world. So let's just go right to it. How did this come about? When did the discussion start? You mentioned you can take a visit. So kind of how has this gone about? And to get to the point where you decided, yes, you wanted to agree to terms with the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, definitely different. Um, you know, luckily we were down here in Houston, uh, safe and sound. Uh, you know, had a bunch of family around. But, um, you know, when my agent started talking through the teams that might be, uh, you know, on the, on the table or, or options that we might have, uh, the Browns just kept kept coming up and, uh, you know, seeing Coach Stefanski get hired, uh, seeing the staff that he brought brought in and uh, just kind of doing my homework that way, knowing those guys, um, you know, it was definitely, definitely top of the list. And uh, as it came down to it, it just made sense. And, um, you know, I'm really excited that, uh, you know, we, we had a fit there that uh, it, it made sense for, for both sides. And, uh uh, I really couldn't be happier that uh, it's it's an, uh, it's a deal that's not just a one year deal that I've played on. It seems like now uh, the last six years I've been on different teams in different cities. Um, I'm excited to uh, you know really be a part of something and and put down some roots and um, you know grow something that I think could be really special there in Cleveland. Absolutely, and I think that's one of the things that everybody in Cleveland's excited about, knowing that it is a multi-year deal to come in here. And it's a little bit different for you probably than in some of the past stops in that, you know, Baker Mayfield is here, the former number one overall pick. And have you gotten a chance to talk with Baker Mayfield uh, since you joined his quarterback room? Yeah, Baker reached out as soon as the news broke, uh, which, which really meant a lot to me. Uh, I've got a lot of respect for him and what he's done on the field, but off the field too. Uh, heck, I like his commercials. I think he's hilarious. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And first of all, foremost, I know you know I know my role coming in, and that's that's another great uh, uh, great positive for me too is knowing my role, what it's going to be coming in. Uh, I'm going to be ready to play. I feel like I've played at a high level for the last few years. Uh, so if you know Baker's shoelace gets broken at some point in the year, uh, you better be ready. I'm I'm coming in. I'm going to be slinging it. So. Uh, but other than that, I'm ex really excited to be a part of the team, be a, a part of that quarterback room. I know what they've got going already uh, is really special. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited all the way around. And you talk about one of the reasons the Browns were at the top of the list going back to Kevin Stefanski. When he was your quarterback coach in 2017, did you say to yourself, okay, this is a guy that, that could end up being a head coach in the NFL? Yeah, for sure. Um, always one of the most well-prepared coaches that I've ever been a part of, that I've ever gotten a – you know, the privilege to play for. So uh, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And we, and we worked really well together. It was, it was really impressive how uh, Coach Shermer, the offensive coordinator at the time, 
presented game plans. Uh, you know, Coach Stefanski, uh, you know, kind of dissected them and, and uh, you know, translated them into my language and, and, and helped me uh, with my questions on just how to, how to read certain plays or uh, how, to, how to dissect certain defenses. Uh, we really spoke the same language and, and you know, we, we knew each other. We figured each other out. We knew how each other ticked. And uh, so it was, it was a great working relationship. Uh, I'm excited to, uh, you know, to continue that. You know, they talk about, you know, having a head coach and a GM that are joined at the hip, that are lock, working in lockstep. And clearly, that's the case. You look at the, the people that have brought in that we are aware of at this time, yourself at the quarterback, your ties, obviously, to Kevin Stefanski, Andy Janovich, uh, a fullback that you spent some time with in Denver to kind of help run that scheme and have that lead blocker who can also catch the ball out of the backfield. And then Austin Hooper, one of the premier tight ends in the NFL, Jack Conklin, one of the premier tackles, both versed in the wide zone, both very proficient fishing at it. Uh, when you see that all kind of coming together, not to mention, we didn't even get, talk about Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry, and David Joku, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. There are some pretty nice pieces here. On our case. <laughs> yeah, just, just to name a few. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it really is incredible. And I, I really, uh, you know, going back to what you really talked about with Andrew and uh, uh, Coach Stefanski, but uh, I didn't even get to come on a visit. I haven't even stepped foot in Ohio. Um, you know, so being here on the phone in Houston and talking with all those guys, uh, just I really can't believe how much on the same page those guys are and just the way they talk, the same language, the, the same mindset, the same culture they want to build. The, um, you know, just, just all those things, I think, that build a great football team, um, you know, starting with a foundation. Uh, it's been really, really cool. It's gotten me really excited here in Houston, like sitting my, you know, on my couch at home, just ready to work. And uh, uh, I know all those guys are, too, sitting at home, uh, you know, watching film, getting ready, doing Zoom meetings like this. So uh, it's, it's been fun to, you know, it's been a fun afternoon of, uh, of phone calls and flurry of, of uh, you know, excited ideas and, uh, you know, trying not to get ahead of ourselves. And, you know, it's, it's hard not, not to talk about football, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting and, uh, to this next chapter in my life and, and our family's life, uh, to be a part of, uh, a community there too in Cleveland that, uh, from being on the other side of, uh, uh somebody coming in and playing there, it's, it's a special place to play. It was fun. I, I actually checked it off my list of the, the last two stadiums I had not played in yet, uh, this year. So, um, I'm excited to, uh, you know, to be a part of the, be a part of the uh, Cleveland Browns there in Cleveland. Yeah, and you get to see that this year in the, in the preseason. It is a little yeah. bit of a different yeah, scenario. Just a yeah, just a little taste. What, what does it mean, Do you knowing what this fan base is, and, and I'm sure anybody you've talked to in the league who's played here uh, can tell you it's, it, it's a rabid fan base. They are hungry for winning. They're hungry for success. As I always tell people when they come, look, if you come here and, and help this team in the Super Bowl, you'll have a statue. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. Uh, what's it like to, to come in and be able to play in front of a fan base that you know is as passionate and is as hungry as the fan base here for the Cleveland Browns? I mean, I, I'm excited to be a part of it. I don't, I don't know what it feels like. I, you know, uh, I've been a part of some cool places that have, that have really backed the teams, and it, it, it means so much, you know. Um, I'll, I'll tell a, one story I haven't told many people at all, but uh, two times this has ever happened to me ever in a football game when I'm in the pocket, I'm dropping back to pass, and I'm stepping up looking downfield, and I actually hear the stands get louder as a defensive lineman gets closer. Uh, this has never happened before. It's, it's, only happened, it's only happened twice, and it was in Cleveland when Miles Garrett was coming around the corner on third down. And I could not believe just the amount of, of energy and just how loud it got. And I actually was able to step up, like, as I heard, like, oh, my, oh, my, like, He's getting closer, and the crowd kept getting louder and louder uh, as as he got closer and closer. So I can feel – I know they're into the game. They are on the edge of their seats. They are excited for big plays and obviously want, you know, those guys like Miles to get sack fumbles and, and uh, you know, destroy other quarterbacks. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to be uh, on the receiving end of those cheers instead of uh, 
uh, on the brunt of uh, maybe you know sacks and uh, and quarterback hits. <laughs> And, I, and I'm sure you're happy as well, by the way, that Miles Garrett can only chase you and then not touch you in practice. You don't have to worry about him coming around the quarter anymore. Exactly. I'm ready to take uh, me and Miles' relationship to the next level, man. I think uh, <laughs> I'm excited about that. Absolutely, Case. I got to ask you. Obviously, you're in that you're in Houston. You said that you are a, a legend in Houston. For people who are, you know, there's some people out there that that may not know the history, but this is a man here who had three seasons in college with more than five thousand yards and forty four or more touchdowns passing. You accomplished some amazing things. You got the jersey there, and you know your college career. And I love when you said, "If I get in there, I'm going to come and sling it." You were really, you are, you are a gunslinger, and you're somebody who's put up a lot of points and a lot of numbers wherever you've been. Minnesota that year, 22 touchdowns, seven interceptions. So uh, if you do have to come on the field for the Browns, you're getting somebody that is no stranger to throwing the ball around the yard. Yeah, I, I love playing quarterback. And, and like I said, I think I've played uh, at a high level over my career. Um, you know, and, you know, some of the stats, some of the scores may not, from even last year may not show it, but, uh, I, I like where my game's at. Um, you know, I'm I'm never content. I'm never happy. So I'm I'm continuing to work and, and grow my craft and uh, continue to to get better as a quarterback. But uh, yeah, I feel like I'm uh, a, a quarterback that can lead a team uh, that I can play a full season and be ready to do that. Uh, I feel like I can be a team that's gonna or be a quarterback that can help a team uh, as the backup quarterback as well. And uh, uh, supporting uh, Baker and whatever he's got going, supporting the offense, supporting Stefanski, Ben Pelt, um, you know, helping, you know, helping dissect some defenses in the film room, um, all sorts of things, all while being ready to play an extremely high level uh, if, uh, if my name is called. What do you, you said you love playing quarterback. What do you love about playing quarterback? I love having the ball in my hands. Uh, I always have. I'm a competitor. Uh, I'm a winner. I love to win. I hate to lose. Um, and, you know, playing quarterback means you're, you know, the ball's in your hand. And a lot of the decisions that you make and uh, plays that you make or don't make uh, are on you. And if you've worked hard and, and you've put in the work and put in the preparation like I know I have and I will, uh, I feel pretty good about my chances every time I step on that field. So uh, there's a lot of reasons. That's probably the, the elevator answer. But, uh, um you know, it's it's a it's a great sport. I think it's the greatest position and in, in uh, the greatest sport. In that case, I would be remiss if I let you out here. I told you before we got this thing going. I had to ask about that sword. I'm a sword aficionado. I actually have a few swords in my house as well. So, what is the deal? What's the story there with that sword? It's kind of by a, I don't know if it's a family crest. I, I don't know what's going on over there. Yeah, it uh, yeah it doubles as uh, uh, it's a part of the family crest. Deal. My my father gave me that when I was uh, awesome. Turned 18, the sword, which is engraved with uh, our family motto, and then, you know, the four pillars of, you know, what our, the Keenum name means. Uh, but, yeah, it, it doubles as a, as a self-defense, home, home, uh, home defense mechanism there. I got it right by the door. So, uh, no, I'm just kidding. That's not it's, – it's purely for looks. But I think maybe I'll, uh, I'll get this, uh, this SB here. It's solid. Maybe that would be a better, better Look one. at that. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, <laughs> are you serious? Is your family motto really on that sword? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. What is the yeah. family motto? You can't just like drop that I have a sword with a family motto on it and now tell us the family motto. Jeez, that thing's massive. Yeah, it is. It's sweet. I don't know if you can really see it, but it says, Keenum, if God is for us, who could be against us? Yeah, and then on this side, it says, honor integrity, courage, and loyalty. That is awesome. Your dad, your dad did that? Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> that is pretty, pretty good. Yes, yeah. indeed. That's, an, that's a legit two-handed broadsword right there. I mean, that's yeah, dude. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Case, thank you so much for the time. Get back to your lovely family. We really appreciate it and could not be more happy. I got to tell you, when we, when we knew the Browns were going to be in the market, uh, Case Keenan was at the top of the list. And I think you come, obviously, the knowledge of the staff, knowledge of the offense, and what you can do for Baker, similar size, your success in this league. And I think it's going to be a, a great fit. And, and I know everybody in Cleveland, once that news broke, was like, all right, that's the guy we wanted. So welcome to the Browns. Uh, thank you so much for the time. Stay safe down there with your family. and. Uh, 
looking forward to getting to actually meet you in person and not over Zoom. Yeah, looking forward to it. Appreciate you guys having me.